Welcome to our episode of Athlete Things. And today we are joined by five time world champion, one times world games champion, Mr. 800, Mr. Worldwide, Mr. World Traveler, doing comps everywhere, Shell Backland. How are you going today, sir? I'm good. Thank you. Really good. That's good. Good to hear. Thanks for joining us on the pod. Obviously, fresh off that huge performance at the Euro Championships. Um, we want to dive straight into it, of course. It was like, of course, another record-breaking performance, but definitely a statement made after how the kind of 74 kilo or, you know, IPF competitions have panned out this year. So I guess let's go straight into it. How was that performance for you? Was it everything you expected? Um, and then I guess the preparation to leading up to it. Yeah, for the first time in like yeah, so many years, like everything went as expected. Like every time I go uh, going out with uh, with my dog, the calculator is is on and just going through the numbers. And every time it was two sixty two point five, two hundred seven point five, three thirty. That was like the goal, and it actually went easy. So that was a good thing. Yeah. So. For the first time, just focusing on raw really helped and not doing like mm. anything anything else. So that was, uh, yeah, something else. Mm. I know you posted before in terms of like not having your competitors there. Do you feel like kind of, I guess, not having the pressure of that competition helped you relax into the day more in terms of it feeling easy in that sense? Or was it more just like, training in general and how you how you showed up on the platform all came together i think for me it's it's so much easier to like do well when i have good competitors oh well, i had that as well now but like yeah not on the same level this time uh so when i get big com- uh, big competitors i will also lift better mm-hmm. so when I found out that Alex didn't, uh, uh, I couldn't come, that was uh, not the greatest thing because I really like to compete against him. I have beat him, he has beaten me like the last Euros. So, but I knew that like two, three weeks before. So, okay, we still have like Joshua. And um, I think he told me like, two days before I was leaving, he couldn't come either. So, of course it sucked, but like the whole, the whole like uh, up to this competition, I thought that he would do 800 and he, in every video, he was like teasing that I'm so strong now, I will never show my lifts. So I thought of him like as Taylor. So when he can come that, that sucked, but I think if uh, he was there, call uh, Tim, I would lift even better. Is that um? Is that Josh Wright you're talking about? Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, awesome. I guess um, what what was different in preparation than leading to Euros? Because obviously, you know, you went seven sixty in Malta, and for someone who's been in the game for like sixteen years, like yourself to go plus 40, you know, in the span of how many months, five, five months or so, did anything change in training for you in terms of like your training performance, um, mindset, nutrition, sleep, any of that? Or was it literally how it just, those three lifts, squat bench, deadlift just came together? 262. I think I was more, I think I was more surprised about the 760 than the 800 actually, because, uh, Six weeks before the Worlds, I lifted at the Euros equipped. Yep. And I didn't have that much time to like get ready. Yep. So to like get on that level again, that's just uh, showed me that, okay, I can be even better. I, I didn't have that much time. So uh, after that, we totally changed our training. Uh, I really never trained that heavy. So if I'm doing like 250 deadlifts, it will take like two weeks to recover. Yeah, right. And that's not even 
that's not even a big deadlift. So true. Uh, from now on, we started having like uh, every each week we had some heavy singles like RP seven, eight, maybe nine. And just by doing that week for week, and I didn't have any pain. That really helped. Yeah. So, and I'm like that. If I can do, if I can squat to seventy in training, I can do three hundred in comp. I'm so much better at comps than at training. So, when I did the two fifty fifth, two fifty five squat in training, I knew that I would do better. Yeah, because I that's how I work. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting, like in terms of how you recover from like lifting heavy. Do you feel like that's kind of from all your experience in equipped, obviously having like support from equipment and then when you lift raw, you're not getting as much support, it just hits you harder? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah of course it does. But I just think that from all the years that I've been training, it just, I've never trained any any heavy sets right yeah because all my heavy sets was with the equipment yeah yeah so just by changing up that uh yeah. did work really well i didn't expect it to be as good in like six seven months so and when i was lifting with the equipment and after a heavy session with or without equipment it just takes so much time for me to like to pull over 200 again just takes time and that's that's kind of weird actually but uh hmm. now i can and that really helps me helps my training 100 percent. yeah uh, i do want to jump in and ask i guess like touching upon the equip side of things and how long you've been doing it i guess how does going from equipped play into the longevity of your career because obviously you've been competing for over like 16 years i think you're up to like your 18th year now right so yeah you know and you're training sub maximally in terms of like those kinds of loads versus now how, how does that kind of play into how long you've been able to keep lifting pain-free i'm not sure really because when i was like 23 24 years old i was training so fucking much i train like six days a week uh and four or five hours sessions if i was sick a week i just took all my training on the sunday that week <laughs> i was like training like crazy <laughs> and then it was like six squats six bench six deadlifts i also went to the sports school at the, the same time and it was like waking up swimming two hours and then running and then basketball handball and if you're doing that the whole day, then you go up to train. And still, I was smashing weights. So I think my capacity was really good that time. But after after Worlds in uh, 2017, the, the Classic World that I won, I really lost the motivation. And I think like from not training that hard for so many years, I think that gave me like more years to come now. If I was pushing all the way from like when I was 19, I don't think that I would still manage to keep up. But I don't know. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Cause like well, from 2017 onwards, you've you had this bit of a dip, right? I think you were yeah. you also had a kid during that period of time, right? So obviously life and recoverability would have changed. Yeah, it's 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 kind of weird because um after i won with taylor like i i didn't i didn't have any plans to like really do classic because i liked equipped that was i, I never knew i never knew that there was something else right so <laughs> uh, the only thing that i thought about was like i can try the classic and then i beat taylor and it wasn't that big at that time. It's like bigger now because he got so mm. good. Uh, I didn't get my kid before like 2021. So there were some years there that when I just, I really didn't like powerlifting that much. It was just hard to just get to the gym. 
uh, I had some, maybe I had two, three weeks that was good. And maybe it was three, four weeks without any training. Mm. And I think it was after we made a documentary about the equip team from like Worlds 2021 in Stavanger, in Norway, until the World Games. And I was like, if I wouldn't qualify for the World Games, I would stop in 2021. So that we, but at that meet, just something happened. I just got the fire back. Uh, not that much for the classic, but still for the equipped. And just coming back to classic this year, or the Euros, the, the year before that, when I'm doing the worst meet that I've ever done, I get so motivated to just keep on going. So still doing like 692.5, fifth or sixth place. I was just happy. It's really weird thing. From like winning everything that I'm able to, to just like lose so hard, that really helped. Weird, but yeah, I can oh. relate to that. Yeah. yeah, that like that losing feeling or, or not doing as well as you kind of think you should reignite that fire makes you makes you want to do better. And then it's like you're someone as well. Like you've done so much, right? You you beat Taylor, World Games, Jaris, or like everything. And then it's like now, yeah. I guess for you, it's what's left to do, and we have new competitions that you can do to be the champion yeah. of them as well. So I guess you have that that fire and that motivation for that as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like after beating Taylor and he was like a, a big thing, uh, I was just like, what now? Just, is this it? Mm -hmm. Is this the classic? And mm -hmm. he had a lot of motivation after that and just kept on going and I didn't, right? So... When we lifted against each other in 2019, I just met up just to lose because I had nothing to give. I had, hadn't been able to train. I didn't want to train. Uh, but at that time, it was just a statement for me that I will just go to this meet and just lose and just stop with the classic. It's not for me anymore. I had too much pain and too much uh, problem with just getting through a training week. So like going down on that that sword, right? Like still showing up, not not just not showing up because you knew you were going to lose, still still going anyway. Yeah, yeah. And to get second place, it's, it's not losing, right? But <laughs> I did beat him two years before. I did, I did <laughs> like beat him two years before that. And now my total is going down. His total went up like 40 kilos. Yeah. So that was <laughs> first to the, to the stomach. That same year, though, like that 2019, you end up going forward into the UAE Equipped Worlds, right? And that's where you knocked off Jalsaw. Was that? Yeah, after? that was the first yeah. time. Yeah. So you were pretty yeah. much like heavy into Equipped Train, I'm, I'm assuming then, and then still trying to commit to Raw versus Taylor? Um, Just trying to remember. I think I was lifting 2019. Yeah. I think I did like 900 at the Euros that year in in May. So yeah, the, I probably did the both yeah, at, that, at that time. Yeah. yeah. I just, I had a thought before when we were talking about it just in terms of motivation and performances. And I want to just jump off really quick. Um, it seemed like, like looking through your competition history, you know, you had 2013 yeah. World Games where you came second place. And then there's that big gap all the way up until... 2022 world games where you took the title like and then after that 2013 kind of world games loss you went on to do your highest ever total of 942 and a half so did yeah. you take like that second place loss in 2013 in, in puerto rico i think it was did that fuel that 942 and a half and then i guess did you hold on to that all the way up until you wanted to knock off that world games title in 2022 yeah, I really want that title. Uh, the, the thing that I'm regretting uh, from the 2013 it was in uh, Cali, Colombia. Yeah. Um, 
uh, it was that I, I never got a chance to try to beat Oleg. I really hurt my back in the lifting and my trainer wouldn't like let me. I think I would won if I pulled like 335 or something. And we only went for 325 and took the silver. And yeah, you never know. You have injuries, you have kids, like everything can come and uh, you will never maybe go back, right? So to win in 2022, that was real a real big moment. And so close that I was so close for not winning, even if I was the strongest. So, um, yeah, I'm happy about the, the win, but not the result. Yeah. But it was still a win. Is that part of the motivation now in terms of committing a bit more to Raw in terms of you've almost got that one done? You've got the World Games. You've had all those equipped World titles. So do you feel a bit of relief now where you can pursue Raw more? Is that kind of the motivation to commit to like, you know, Malta and then further raw comps? I really want to do both, but just by looking at my results the last years, you can just see that both of them are not that great. So I can win, but like <laughs> in the equipped, of course, but it's not as great as it should have been. Like there's no reason that I can do like 950 in the 74. But I really, I love the equipment, but I really hate it as well. Just lift, lift, mm -hmm. lifting at comps is okay, but when you're Thursday night go, going <laughs> down to the club, get those knee wraps and yes, it sucks. And you get so angry on the <laughs> equipment. It's uh, it's crazy. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I think it's really hard. So, that's the problem for me. There's there's a lot of people doing it quick, so that should be easy to like follow them. But yeah. when I still can lift good classic, I think I will still keep doing it because it shows that, yeah, I can still do okay. I uh I get the vibe that you just love the thrill of equipment, equipped lifting and lifting so heavy and like having just a big squat on your back. But there's all there's always going to be this like commitment factor in terms of like fucking yeah. sore training sessions, equipment giving you the shits, long long hours yeah. in the gym. So you're kind of like torn between both. Whereas you can just chuck a pair of knee sleeves on, bit of wrist wraps, yeah. and and then do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, and like and I'm not, and I'm also like that kind of lifter that my training lifts are always bad. Like. I wish that I was just recording every session that was bad because that's 95% of it. <laughs> like <laughs> really, really bad. Like really struggling with 200 kilo squats. Benching 140 is hard and it's crazy. Man. There's something just happening at comps. I just <laughs> get so much better. It's uh, And the, the more pressure it is, the better I will lift. And that's a good thing. Mm. Is it just now like you know, so many years and just now you've just understood that you're better on the platform. How do you, how do you manage that in training now in terms of like these bad sessions? Like, you know, you've just went fucking 800. So your training can't be that bad, but obviously, you know, your expectations of what you do in the gym versus what you can do on the platform, there's this big gap. So like, do you just accept it now? And you just like keep training no matter what load is on the bar and you just know there's going to be 800 on the platform. <laughs> Uh, the difference from before, it's, yeah, like you said, that I just accepted that training is shit. Just like, just take the pain and just try to survive and you will get the good meat, right? <laughs> but the difference to now that I, I also had good trainings, right? Yeah. When I was training uh, heavier, I would, it was easier to like train heavy to recover from it. Yeah. So, when I did this good at at the training, I knew that it will be even better at comp. Mm. Because I had my last heavy two weeks before or something. And after that, I just lift like 150 kilo squats, 120 kilo bench. I'm, I'm not even touching big weights at all. And a lot, a lot of people now are just afraid to like, they need to be on 90% two days before the beat. And I know that 
for myself, I can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm forty two. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't do that. Just taper and super compensate into a beast. Yeah, yeah, but I, I've always done that. Always done it, and it, that's always worked for me. So, yeah, I was keep doing it. I, uh, I, I don't want to just really quick want to go back to Malta in terms of like the training towards that. Now that you know, in the seventy-four kilo division, there's you know fresh blood coming through. All these like young, very talented lifters. You obviously knew going into Malta, you know that's what you were facing, and then you ended up coming into the B group. And there was that whole drama there with like, you know, lifting in B. I guess two questions. The main one would be how you felt, you know, in Malta lifting in B group when that was kind of like your return to classic, you know, going against Taylor and, and all that. And then second one would be, was 800 the plan in Malta? And then did that kind of affect how it played out from a competition standpoint? 800 was not the plan in Malta at all. That was yeah. <laughs> not even close. The um, uh, the problem about uh, the Malta was we have nationals in like March or something, and I always want to lift against as good uh, as possible um, opponents. So I went up to the 83, also because it's better that way because I'm always so heavy so <laughs> uh, I lifted there uh, and I won and that was a really good good meet for me and and I, I didn't think that, that that would be a problem with the nomination list people know who I am people know what I can do yep. but when I come there they're just nope you're down to the B group and then I had two days in Malta that was that was bad that I was really just didn't really want to lift because I was there for the for the big stage and tried to like yeah maybe not to win but at least like do better yeah be and in the mix. yeah be in the mix like that everything can happen right yeah. if I tried three thirty five that day that would be or three thirty seven that would also be for the win right. So, yeah. yeah, you never know. But so I just needed to lift in the B group and still lifted okay. But there was, yeah, mixed emotions. Why not? There was never any plan to win, but at least, yeah, be top three. It just feel weird to coming from equipped and be a lifter that people know. To just come to classic now and people are just like who the fuck are you never seen it before <laughs> first time lifting what the fuck <laughs> uh, so that was uh that was weird well you just you just reminded them as well. <laughs> yeah but after the meet as well people people know that didn't know me anyway because i didn't lift that good right it was about the a group and yeah i couldn't do anything about that yeah yeah so but it got me, it probably got me to the place where I changed up my training and took the equip, equipment away. So there was a good thing. I really don't think about Malta that much anymore. It just started something. Yeah. This was like the the first result of that. Yeah. I was going to say, do you still feel underestimated then in the raw division? Because like no one knows who you are. I really felt that afterwards. I mm. always love like listening to the preview and everything like that, right? Trying to search uh, out where where are they talking, and like uh, nobody's talking about me. And I'm like, okay, this is something else than the the, the equipped, right? So I'm not lifting to like so people to 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 know me, right? But of course, it's it's uh, it's cool to like. Uh, be a lifter people I've heard of. Mm. I've been in this sport for so many years. And yeah, won some titles. Of course, it's equipped, so people don't give a shit. But uh, yeah. 
I guess the other yeah. thing going back on that, like because you've been around for so long and equipped is obviously where it all started. And then, but like, there's this, this background of like no one knowing you now because the raw so mainstream, but you've done it for longer than everyone else must feel weird as well, especially when you've won so much. Yeah. But, but still as from like 2017 until now, when I like had my dip in performance, mm -hmm. the sport has been so much bigger, right? For the last years. And yeah. That's the years I haven't performed in the classic. So, of course, I understand it as well. If people were lifting last year, people new people are coming in. They don't they don't know who anyone is, right? So, people don't care about history anymore. And yeah. I'm a dinosaur, yeah. so. <laughs> that was, yeah, it's, that was a very good line. <laughs> no one cares about a, history. I got a timestamp that <laughs> bad boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just I just remembering when I joined powerlifting and the first thing I looked at was who was good before me. Who did the big numbers? Who was the first to do it? That was always important for me. And I always like watch try to watch as much as I can still, like because I think it's an interesting sport. People don't like it. They they just do it. I can't understand that, but I really, really like the, just the history of it, really. Yes, if we're going to move on then, like go from equipped to what we have now with Raw, I guess Sheffield, that's got to be on your kind of radar, right? 100%. This is why you've now committed <laughs> to Raw? No, not, not really. It's it's more about uh, It's more about time. And uh, that I don't have that much time as I had before. Uh, and just looking at how big it is, right? Mm -hmm. Just the classic is so big. World Games classic is going to be so big. Yes. So, and yes. if I gave it up now, just doing equipped, I think I would regret forever, right? It would... Just when I'm did like my result right now I, I i just see that okay i'm i'm still in i can still win right Fucking nice. of course perkins is coming in but you never know right he is 25 he just got engaged he can have a kid like everything can happen <laughs> everything so you never know right you know how and it feels right look at it. yeah that's a yeah, very yeah, interesting take it feels First yeah, that's a good tag. So, that's a, I like that tag. You never know you could end up having a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but of course. That's true. It's very true. And then that you came. can't sleep 15 hours anymore, right? Yeah. Can't eat like yeah, six steak dinners in a row. Like things are different. Yeah, that um that was personal, that one. You felt that. <laughs> you felt that. <laughs> You just lightened up the, the hopes of all the other 74s in the world. <laughs> Austin's going to have a kid. Um, was, <laughs> was, was the 800, was that a bit of a statement? Obviously looking forward to Sheffield then in terms of like, you know, making them work a little bit harder. Um, you know, Carl's training is going very well. He's looking, he's said, you know, we had them on podcasts and, He's talked openly about, you know, doing around that 800 marks. Was there anything involved? Like, obviously, 800 is a very nice number, but was any part of it like a statement to those Sheffield competitors and the 74 battle at Sheffield to make it harder for them? Of, of course, um, I, I, I just try to lift as best as possible, but yeah. just... Doing 800 is one thing, but doing 800 with kilos in the tank, that was more special. Yeah. So uh, I got a uh, dinner in white from Gustav in 93, who, who was thanking me because it made, made it harder for the, the 74 guys to take the record now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They would, <laughs> they would probably take the record because they are awesome lifters. So, but I'm just glad that we are so competitive that it's so close it's Austin yeah. coming in of course there will be some years that 
uh, he would be so much better than us. But things can happen in in uh, two three years. Everything can happen. Yeah, but you can get injured. You yeah. can yeah don't like the sport anymore. There, there's so many things, and um yeah went through all those things. So it could happen to everyone, right? Yeah. I definitely think that whole like falling, I mean, you've experienced it, right? And you've been just open about that with us in terms of just not liking the sport anymore, right? Like, you know, it's yeah. quite natural to go through these periods where you just don't want to do it anymore. I think that's a very good point, especially for people who reach such high success so early on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but it was, it was never really about like, but of course, I love to win. That's uh, that's a good thing for me. But just seeing how strong I can be, right? I was I was always dreaming about like big numbers. Eight hundred was of course a dream, uh, and I always hoping that I can do it. But when when I just did eight hundred, now I'm just thinking, okay, now let's go for eight thirty five, eight forty, right? Yeah, there's. There's no stopping now. Now, yeah. yeah. Now I just showed what I can do with like six months of training. And I got the gym now uh, at my house so I can train when, when I want. Because to this meet, from when I'm finished to work to when I need to get the kid from the kindergarten, I had like one hour and 20 minutes. So yeah. I needed to train quick. So I didn't Damn. even need it, uh, got to tr uh, to train that much either, but it was enough to get some results. It's like, it's like half of our training time. Yeah. Like three hours or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I really I think wish you... that I had three hours, really. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it sounds like based on how, how we've spoken so far, you've got a really good balance between, like, competitiveness and knowing when to switch it on versus accepting your own life and kind of like how powerlifting fits into your life right and i think yeah. a lot of struggles like i guess facing the negative downsides of when you're hyper competitive and comparing yourself versus you don't have that problem yeah yeah that's true i think the my like uh my mental game it's my biggest weapon because i have so many injuries i have so many problems like can't really do squat without taking painkillers because it really hurts in my calf every time I'm down in the in the, in the bottom. So, but just try to get the best out of the training that I can do. I can't really change up my life. I will not give up my family to lift as good as possible, but I'll just try to modify it into my life. And and it worked real good. It's uh, it's been hard, but I found a way. What's yeah, um, interesting. what's uh, you're walking the dog. It's nice outside. You're looking at the trees. You whip out the calculator. It's what cold are... as fuck here. It's cold as fuck. So <laughs> oh yeah, true. Well, it's nice, it's nice here. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's cold here. <laughs> I'm okay, freezing. Can... My hand is dying, but I just need to use it just. To... Just yeah. a dream. You got a, you got a jacket on. Some... You got a jacket on. You got some gloves on. You whip out the calculator. Yeah. What are you pun what are you punching in? Until this meet, it was of course the numbers I got. Now I'm thinking more like doing 275, doing 220, doing 340 as a start. And we'll see. But I've always done this. Like my calculator is probably the app I've been using the most. Yeah. From when I started in 2007, I was like, first meet, I'm going to take, uh, we have like a qualify for the national team, right? I dreamed about it. I wasn't even close, but it was still a dream, right? It was always a dream. My first national, I wanted 750. I did 660. Still happy because it was 30 kilo more than I lifted before, right? But I'm always dreaming. Dreaming of the big numbers. Mm. Mm. I've been in that space heaps of times. 
It's like, yeah, aim aim for the moon, land on the stars, and you you still end up happy, but you end up yeah. getting there. But it, but where you want to be when you get there is further yeah. than where you where you get to essentially. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a circle. But this time it didn't because I had eight hundred in my mind and and it worked right. But nine out of ten times it it doesn't work. Yeah. What do you um? I mean, we've kind of already hinted at it now with you know the plans to get to Sheffield and stuff. But what does the the next year look like for you then in terms of raw versus equipped? Obviously, pursuing a bit more of the raw, but what's the kind of competition timeline or you know events looking like? I like my first uh, my first uh, vision was like to be uh, to qualify for the World Games. Yep. Uh, classic. And then qualify for the World Games equipped too. Yeah. But uh, you can't do both. Yeah. So I have to choose. Or, yeah, I need to qualify first, right? But uh, I will try for the classic. So yeah, next year, I think it's going to be either Europeans or Arnold's in the start of the year in March. That's earlier now, yeah. Yeah. And Worlds. And... I really don't think there will be any more meets that year. Yeah. So hopefully I will get the invite to Sheffield and yeah. So March and June. When is World Games scheduled for? What month? Okay. Uh, August, I think. Yeah. I think it's August. So I really, really. Um, interested in how they're going, going to do it with the Worlds, like two months mm. before World Games. Mm -hmm. And Sheffield and all these other big comps, right? It's almost like you've got to you got to pick. pick your battles, right? you got to pick which one you're kind of shooting for. Is it is it the money? Is it the World Game title? Is it a World Championship? Is it two Who or three? Who don't want the money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess yeah, we're, we're... the way that it kind of looks is like everything is a qualifying meet for Sheffield at the moment, essentially. And you already have the title of being world champion before you have the title of being world games equipped, but not world games classic. So it, oh, for that, you that's might make more special, sense. Like, okay, you know, I want to be this, 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 and then go to Sheffield because essentially you can just qualify from anywhere as long as you've done what you've done. So Yeah, yeah. Let let's just see what happens. But, but I probably will lift at Worlds as well because mm. I can handle it. Uh, it's two months between. That's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. and it's also if you know that people are going to be there, what you want to go against them? You've already said that you want to battle against the best, so it makes sense. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. When people are saying Austin is so much better than me, he is, but. He needs to lift as well. He needs to come to the meet. He needs to take the switch. He needs to win against Taylor at the, the Nationals. Uh, he needs to beat me on the day. Maybe he beats me with 100 kilos. We never know. But I will still like try to do the best I can. I can't do anything different. Not in my life situation anyway. Yeah. Well, you never know. Look, Taylor went 8.30 what he went and then it hasn't been back right yeah so and he, he had a kid <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the problem it's the kid <laughs> right um how do you obviously you've done all these comps right how do you kind yeah. of compare like a world games to a world championships in terms of environment pressure uh just the competition itself like how serious it feels because obviously looking forward to you know world games raw i'm sure that's going to be quite the spectacle it's quite the spectacle um just as much as sheffield is in terms of you know the flashy lights and the big crowd and everything um how do you how do you view all of those in terms of like the environment and how serious it feels um after like being to the world games last year and Sheffield this year of course uh, just as a coach but 
the pressure is just something that gives me more uh more energy more uh the more pressure it is it just helps me so much so just the venue at the, the world games was good but not that good uh, like early in the week when i was lifting right you can always see like on the end of the week when the um, the big guys are lifting there are yeah. more people right but that just also because of the a lot of the spectators is lifters right yeah like multiple so, super heavyweight yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i just watched the like the whole team from norway when we were lifting at the, the world games that people really had problems because it's it became so much more important and i think that will also be a problem for a lot of people going to world games the first classic I've never been in a situation when it's the most pressure and I, and I hadn't like lifted my best. So I think World Games will be a really good thing for me and Sheffield as well, if I ever get invited, of course. But uh, yeah, I think World Games will be amazing. Mm. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. It's really exciting looking forward to all these huge competitions now. Like you said, since like 2017, 2018, Raw especially has just kind of skyrocketed and even more so in the last two years, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, we're going to wrap up. We've got one little question we just kind of thought of because obviously, you know, you have been to so many competitions and you've, you've been everywhere around the world. Um, what's the, the best place you've been to to do a competition? And also the worst place, and if there's any funny stories of the worst place, like best place and like best like venue or like like best... like location, like country and location, things to do and see. Oh, it's really a hard one. I think that Malta was like one of the best events, really. Just they had like everything so close, and you can just go out to the beach, and it was, yeah, it was, it was you a really party. good venue. You can party just next door. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> party that much, but uh, yeah, it was uh, that was really nice. Maybe World Games as well in Alabama was also just everything around it is so special, right? Yeah. Not not maybe the powerlifting, but just everything around, right? It's so. It's so huge. We're not yeah. like used to it. It's more like Olympics, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but I would still say Malta. Just, just because Classic is so much bigger and just had another vibe, and then they equipped. Mm. Yeah. And worst place, hmm, been to many <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> fucked up places. Uh, <laughs> I think Belarus was. Was, yeah, yeah, I think that was. <laughs> yeah, that was rough that year, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. When we were at the hotel, just suddenly we just hear explosions, right? And then just marching through the with tanks and everything. So that was crazy. And at the banquet, we got like four chicken sticks and the rest of it was vodka. So that was. Uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> just, uh, it was just vodka yeah. on tap. Yeah, so that uh, yeah, we almost died. That was crazy. <laughs> from, the, from the from the vodka or the tanks, <laughs> both maybe. <laughs> was the were the chicken skewers good at least? Was a good chicken? I don't even remember. There was okay. too much vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right, man. Well, um, we'll wrap it up there again. Thanks so much for coming on. Again, yeah, yeah, huge... no problem. Huge year for you, 800, first one to do it. Uh, we didn't mention it, but highest ever GL so far in IPF competition. So statement made, man. And yeah, but I can't someone... really... yeah, you go. Yeah, I can't really say that because Nick Manders was so angry at me because they're doing uh... it in the USAPL, but it's yeah. it's still not the same. Yeah. And I wrote to him like, I've been to so many worlds, so many nationals, and there is a big difference. Yeah. When you have American judges, it's easier than coming to the 
when I'm listening at the EP, EPF, it's it's the IPF judges. Yeah, we yeah. have everyone from them. So yeah, you you can't Squat depth. like yeah 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 yeah. So, so it's I, mean, I I watched a lot of it. Um, streamed a lot of it during the week last week, and yeah, it is rough. Like it's not rough. It's it's honest calls, but it's it's true calls. Yeah. Uh, everyone has a different judgment of hip crease, um, soft deadlifts that you look at it back yeah. and you be like, oh that would pass in yeah. most other competitions, but not <laughs> at EPF championships. Yeah. And, and didn't, didn't they like take away world records at Arnold's in the U S think so. Cause because it just became a US APL competition back then. It. Yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I, I was going to bring that up about Manders. Uh, then I wasn't, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> Just, I saw he, that story. He can say what he wants. It's, it's, uh, I really don't care, man. It's uh, still in the rankings. I know that there are many lifters stronger than me that will outlift me. But yeah, you just have to do it at like the international, uh, international meet. Of course, yeah. they can do it, but they haven't done it yet. Yeah. Like you said, right, they've... They've got to go to the venue. They've got to weigh in. They've got to do the competition. And like you said a couple of times, anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. you can get the kid. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, Nick Mandis went seven ninety seven point five. So, oh. yeah. So you <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks, Shell. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Have a good.